Hey, everybody. All right, so this is not going to be a very conventional presentation. I'm going to require you all's energy and input and excitement and enthusiasm. So if you guys think that something is exciting, then feel free to cheer, feel free to chant. If you think something's funny, laugh. If it's not, crickets. OK, great. So I'm going to be talking to you all about how to speak Gen Z. And you guys might be wondering at this point, well, what, whoops, what is Generation Z? Generation Z is a cohort that was born between about the year 2000 and about 2015, and they're the generation after millennials. The best way to describe this generation is true digital natives. This is the generation that was born in a time after analog. They have no memory of cassette tapes or CD Walkmans or VHS. You guys remember that though, right? You guys in the crowd do? Okay, cool. <laughs> Woo! Okay. So they're also the generation that is notorious for always being on those smartphones. But there is a fallacy that can occur when you stereotype an entire generation. You sometimes fail to account for the actual age of the members of that generation. So for example, when people stereotype millennials as being dismissive to authority or being entitled, then we're not thinking about the fact that maybe 20 years ago, when some people didn't have those positions of authority, then they were also dismissive to authority, and they also were more entitled than previous generations probably would have liked. So we have to be thinking about that before we judge generations. So at this point, you guys may be wondering, well, why am I even qualified to talk about Generation Z in the first place? So I'm dating myself. I was born in 1994. That makes me 22 years old. And that means I still know something. I know that sometimes people think if you have a certain age that you don't know anything. But I promise you guys, I know at least two things, and this presentation is one of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I have the privilege of being able to serve Generation Z in a mentorship capacity. So uh, like I said, this generation was born in about the year 2000. So in order to understand how this generation behaves, how they think, and what their desires may be, we need to understand how they educate themselves. So I have a question for you all. What educational institution has the highest enrollment on the planet? Any guesses? YouTube. Interesting guess. Any other guesses? OK, well, if you Googled it, you would find Indira Gandhi National Open University in India. It's a massive institution with an enrollment of over 4 million students. Crazy. They're doing some bleeding edge stuff. But I'd argue, and you spoiled it, <laughs> that there is a bigger institution out there, <laughs> a bigger educational institution out there. With over 1 billion users, YouTube might be the biggest educational institution on the planet. How many of you all have ever learned how to do something on a YouTube video? Man, that's everybody. That's almost everybody. How many, ha how many of you haven't learned how to do something on a YouTube video? Nobody. Nobody in the room. Wow, that's crazy. And that's also the story for Generation Z, as well as my friends. So we affectionately refer to YouTube as YouTube University. And so there's some crazy stories to really highlight that this is the way that Generation Z learns. True story. There was this kid who taught himself to drive on YouTube. It was in the news about two weeks ago. Have you guys heard of that story? Taught himself to drive, followed all the rules of the road, got no traffic infractions, and did all this while his parents were sleeping. This kid was eight years old. Seriously, this kid was eight years old. This is how this generation learns. And that philosophy or that, that ideology has bled over into my generation as well. Because my generation and friends of mine are self-taught photographers, musicians, hairdressers, uh, makeup artists. They have made income from learning self-taught videos on YouTube. And that's also the case for Generation Z as well. According to this survey of about 5,000 Gen Zers, 72% of them want to start their own business. But entrepreneurship to Gen Z looks a lot different than entrepreneurship in other generations. For example, how many of you all have heard of Jen Selter? Raise your hand, please. OK, one. That's OK. That's OK. <laughs> you are very cool. You are very cool. Jen Selter is an, what we call Instagram celebrity. She's also an entrepreneur in that way because she makes money from ad revenue. The feature that she is proud of, that she is notable for and, and features all over her page, is her rear end. And the, the, the crazy part about it is, one picture of her rear end 
is probably going to have more reach than all of us at this conference for the next week. <laughs> so, I mean, when we think about, it's crazy, right? It's crazy, but when we think about it this way, when we have this message about climate awareness and science literacy that we're trying to teach to the next generation, which is largely scientific and informational in nature, how do we compete with something like this? Well, I have a few suggestions. One is high energy. You have to be so captivating, so attention grasping, so compelling that you get everybody's attention in the room, that you pull those Gen Zers away from their smartphones that they're always on. This is a photo from a career, a career day keynote that I gave a couple of weeks back, and I freestyle rap battled one of the high schools in front of all of his peers. <laughs> Question for you all. How many, how many of his peers do you think were glued to their smartphones when I was freestyle rap battling him in front of everybody? Zero. If you, as the disseminator of information, as the communicator, take personal responsibility for the, re the release of the information and, and how much attention you grasp, then you'll be that much more successful in captivating the attention of Generation Z. But I know this approach isn't for everybody. I mean, not everyone likes to freestyle rap, and not everyone likes to come in a room and just yell at everybody until everyone looks, right? But there are some other ways to meet these Gen Zers halfway. So how do you show up on their phones? My suggestion, memes. <laughs> memes are arguably one of the most efficient ways to communicate in the modern world. Because what happens is, if you create a meme that has a concept that is hilarious or that is compelling in some way, then it has viral potential. These Gen Zers will see something like this, they'll laugh at it, and they'll share it with all their friends. And then you get your idea to become infectious, to spread out to places that you could never reach if you just talk to people in this kind of format. But well, moving forward, I'll show you guys how important memes are. This is a comparison. I know it might be hard for you guys in the back to see. This is a comparison of the amount of times memes was searched on Google versus the amount of times Jesus was searched on Google. And if you, can, if you look here, in 2016, memes overtook Jesus. <laughs> on Google search, memes are more popular than Jesus. So that just goes to show how popular these things have become. But I'd be doing my science degree injustice if I didn't talk about the downside of rapid dissemination of information. This is a meme that was wildly popular during the presidential elections. Has anyone seen this meme before? Raise your hand if you have. OK, a lot of you on the room have seen the meme. This is a quote by Donald Trump. It said, if I were to run, I'd run as a Republican. They're the dumbest group of voters in the country. They love anything on Fox News. I could lie, and they'd still eat it up. I bet my numbers would be terrific. People Magazine, 1998. Well, there's a de debunking website called Snopes that looked at all the interviews in People Magazine from 1998 on the magazine editions, audio interviews, and video interviews, and found no specific mention of this quote at all. This is made up. The entire thing is completely made up. And that goes to show that it's just as easy to communicate factual information and have it spread rapidly and be infectious as it is to communicate misinformation. So that goes to my final question that I'll leave you guys with. If you guys want to learn how to speak to Generation Z, you use facts that are efficiently tailored, that are exciting, and that are attention grabbing, and you use digital content. But how do you ensure that you separate yourselves from all the other stuff that's out there, all the misinformation? How do you condense your message and then communicate facts and truth so well that it stands out from the sea of misinformation that exists in the information age. Think about it. Thank you.